disciples learning. Amen? And if you'll look with me this morning, we're going to pick up in verse 15. And really, to be honest with you, I'm not going to go much past that. I'm going to read down to verse 23. And uh, what, church, let me say this this morning, that uh, we, we, we need to love Jesus. Amen? Amen. And uh, I preached a little bit on that Sunday, Wednesday night, and it's and, uh, just amazing how God just works through his word. Amen? But in, in John chapter 14, in verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, keep my commandments. Well, I'll just stop right there and camp out on that today. Amen? Amen. If you love me, you keep my commandments. And I will pray the Father, he should give you another comforter, that he might, may abide with you for six months. Is that what it says? It says, no, forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. The world don't. But you know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But you see me, because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am, I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. And he that, has my, he that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And Judas said unto him, not Judas Iscariot, Lord, how is it that thou wilt manifest thyself unto us and not unto the world? Look at verse 23. Y'all with me? Say amen. amen. And Jesus said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Now I want you to turn with me to Revelation chapter 22. And we're gonna, I'm going to read this and we're going to pray right quick. In Revelation chapter 22, I want you to look with me in verse 12. Now I might not have had that on my, on my agenda this morning, Ben, but Ben's right with me. Amen. Ben and me are on the same page. Amen. In, in Revelation chapter 22, the very last book the very last message that Jesus gives us to end his great prophecy is in verse 12. And behold, I come quickly. Are you ready for him to come back again? You need to be. He said, and my reward is with me. And to give every man according to his work shall be. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Watch this. Y'all with me? Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For, with, for outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to these things in the churches. Talking about the churches of Asia Minor in chapter 1 and 2 of Revelation. And his messenger is, is called an angel. And, 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 and that, that translates pastor or messenger. And it says for her, he said, I, Jesus, sent my messenger to testify to these things in the churches. And I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning spar. Look at verse 17. And the spirit and the bride say, Come. Let him that hears say, Come. And let him that is a thirst come. Here it is. And whosoever will, let him take of the water of life, that's salvation of Jesus, freely. For I testify to every man that heareth the words of this prophecy of this book, if any man shall add it to these things, God will add it to him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things that are written in this book. And I which testify these things, surely I come quickly. Amen. So come, Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Turn back with me to John chapter 14, verse, uh, uh, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Everybody say commands. Amen. Let's pray this morning. Lord, we come to you because we love you. 
and we need you, and we need you more than we need our next breath. And Lord, there's people that are sitting here today that have no desire whatsoever in their hearts to keep your commands or keep your statutes or, or the Lord to keep any of your ordinances or, or keep any of your bylaws. Lord, they have no desire to serve you whatsoever. Lord, prick their hearts today to be saved. And Lord, there's not any love in their hearts today. Lord, I pray that even right now that you'll move across the hearts and lives of your people today. And Lord, that your will will be done. I want you to encourage the brokenhearted. Lord, those that are going through difficult times in their life. And Lord, help us to look to you. Lord, look to you and not look around to the left or to the right. Not be, be dismayed uh, with what's going on around us. But look to you, the only true and living God, to take care of our problems today. Help us to be a people that will quit blaming everybody else for what we're going through. And Lord, that we'll, we'll take that responsibility upon ourselves today. And Lord, that we'll follow, be followers of you in a mighty way. And Lord, we ask you just to sit down with us. And Lord, that you'll minister to us today. Be with that one or two or three, Lord, that, that are struggling in a, in a deep way. And I pray that you'll sense your presence and your love and your loving arms wrapped around them. And you speaking to them today as only you can. So, Lord, we lift this day up into your hands. We thank you, Lord, that we've been here for 12 years. Lord, all these that are out today, so many are, are, are quarantining. So many are sick. Lord, so many are, are, are without power this morning. But, Lord, we're here mightily under your hand this morning. And, Lord, that your will will be done as only you can. So, Lord, bless this day. And, Lord, we honor you with our lives this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I'm going to give you two things to think about it. If we have time, uh, I may give you three. But I want to welcome Denise and Davis and Dane out on the parking lot this morning. And Lord, and, and we know that Denise is working a lot of hours along with many others at Jackson Purchase. We're glad that you're here this morning. We're glad that the, Dr. Reichert and, and, and Miss uh, and, 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 and Miss Alice is, is here in the parking lot this morning. We're glad you're here, and I know there's others out there. We just want to welcome you in. But church, let me say this this morning, and I want you to get in tune because I got really I got two things I want to say this morning. Amen. And we need, to, we need to get our what we're going to say out of the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And you need to take accountability for what the Word of God says to you and not about anybody else. Right. Church, here it is. We, when we love someone, we want to honor them. We want to serve them. And we want to be with them. We want to enjoy them. And, and with them, there is a loving relationship with honesty. If you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. And there's got to be some give and take with perseverance and, and, and with forbearance. And all this together, together develops an abiding or, or an abode of a relationship that, that, that it is with that person that you love. Amen? And that person today that we love ought to be Jesus Christ. Amen? It says in John chapter 13, when you look back on verse 34, Jesus says this, a new commandment, a new charge I give unto you. Here it is. That you love one another. We heard that all of our life. But you need to circle the next word. It says, as I have loved you. Now I want you to kind of let that soak in this morning because I can tell you a lot of you here are saved, but if you hadn't been saved that long or before you were saved, you forgot what kind of person you were, amen? When we are not saved, we are enemies of the cross. And I want you to know that today, that we are not, we are, there is none good, no, not one. And we don't need to forget where God found us one day, amen? I can tell you I wasn't looking for God when he was looking for me, amen? I can tell you God seeks a man out. He said, he said there's none righteous, there's none seeketh after God, they are all turned aside. They're all turned out of the way. There is none good, no, not one. And it says in that same Romans 3, 26, for, for all have sinned, and, and that means missed the mark. All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I want you to know today that we were enemies of the cross 
I want you to know today before God found us and he saved us, I want you to know today that we were not good. Somebody say amen to that. Even though after we're saved, I can tell you, without the grace of God, we, we can't live but day by day. And I want you to understand it. You need to, under, you need to circle that, that word as. He said, a new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I have loved you when you were wayward, when you were away from me, when you didn't love me, when you wouldn't give your life to me. I loved you anyway. That's the standard. Somebody say amen. amen. As I have loved you. And he also said this, by this, by what? By this love. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. You're born again. Now you need to circle the next word. It's if. Because that word carries a lot of meaning. If you have love one for another. Now I can tell you we live in a day and age where we live in hypocrisy. If you look on Facebook, everybody's happy. You know that ain't true. Somebody say amen to that. And it looks like they got their lives all together. Don't you want to be me? Don't you want to do what I'm doing? And all those type things. And everything's hunky-dory except when you get behind closed doors, there's a different person. And I can tell you who you are at home is who you really are. It's not who you are in public. Hello, preacher. I hope we have a good day. Hope we take up a good offering. Praise the Lord. And then at home you go on and have a big old cussing fit. And, you, and your kids see you and your kids watch you and you think, I have something wrong with this picture because I learned something different back there in children's church. Hello, hello, Brother Keith, Brother Keith. We're, we're, we're not listening right now, but you need to. Amen? Everybody needs to say amen. amen. That's our word today is amen. But we need to love one another. We need to be who we are at home. We need to be who we are here. We need to be at the True Value Store who we are. We need to be at Lowe's or wherever you go in life. You need to be who you are, but you need to be the same person at home. Amen? Amen? And I can tell you our vocabulary at home should be the same vocabulary that we have in public. Our vocabulary in public ought to be the same vocabulary that we have at home. But we don't because we are performing sometimes and it's an act. It's, it, it, it's camouflaged by being an actor. We got some of the best actors I've ever been around in my life. Amen? We need to be who we are in Christ and be not, not, not perform. I don't know how I got off on that this morning, but I'm having a good time. Are you? <laughs> Number one this morning, loving Jesus is our first priority. Look down with me in verse 15. Jesus said, y'all, Jesus said, Jesus, Jesus, all power, all authority, all rule, our Savior said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I want you to turn with me. This is John's writings, and I want you to turn with me to 1 John chapter 5, and I'm going to read four verses. And I want you to see this this morning because our first priority is loving Jesus is the first priority. Look down with me in, in, verse, uh, in, in verse 1 of 1 John chapter 5. If you don't have your Bible, you can look up on the screen. He said, Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God. They're born again. Amen. This is 1 John uh, chapter 5, verse 1. Whosoever believeth that Jesus is Christ is born of God, and every man that loveth him, God, that has begot, has begot loveth him also that is begotten of him. Who's begotten of the Father? That would be Jesus this morning. Amen. So it tells us that our, the, us, the, those that are born again love the Father and they love the Son. By this, verse 2, that by this we know that we, we love the children of God, the brethren, when we love God and keep his commandments. Everybody say, keep his commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep his commandments. Everybody say, that keep his commandments. And his commandments are not grievous. Whosoever is born of God, born again, overcometh the world. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. 
I want you to see that this morning because if you love the Father, you'll love the Son, and you will keep His commands, and, and we are called overcomers. Everybody say overcomer. Now, I want you to see that this morning because that carries a great significant weight. Now, if, for you that are taking notes, you can write some of these verses down because I, I, I wrote them down to read them to you where it would have saved some time this morning. I didn't know how much time we'd have. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 14, this is a great verse. It says, for the love of Christ, the love of Christ constrains us. That word constrains, it means control and compels us. So it tells us that the love of Christ controls and compels us because we thus judge that if one died for all, that's what Jesus did, then we are all dead. We are all enemies of the cross when we're not saved. We're dead. We're dead in our trespasses and sin. Verse 15, and that he died, Jesus died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves but unto him which died for them and rose again. What does that mean? We need to live for him. We need to be in him. We need to be a reflection of him to the one that died and rose again that we claim to be identified with as a Christian. It says this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 19. You might want to write this one down because the first three words are capitalized in the text. We love him because he first Loved us. And if a man say, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he that loveth not his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? And in verse 21 of 1 John 4, And this is the commandment, have we of him, that he who loves God, loves his brother also. Everybody say, love Jesus, love God. That's a t-shirt you ought to buy it, amen? But the first thing that we ought to do, we ought to obey that. We need to love the brethren. We need to love God. We need to keep his commands. Is anybody with me this morning? Amen. Number two this morning and probably it. I want you to know this morning that God wants you personally to experience his love. Now I want you to understand that today, that God wants you to personally experience his love today. Now, I want you to listen to this because a lot of you grew up. I had, I had a very good childhood. I had, a, I had a mother and daddy that loved me. I had a, a good childhood. I had a good youth. The only time it was, it was bad in my youth days was when I was rebelling. Somebody say amen to that. But I always had good parents. Now, they weren't perfect parents, but they tried their best to, to raise three boys and do it to the best of their knowledge. Now, how many of you know that you don't have the same knowledge at 65 years old that you do at 20 years old? Amen? So I want you to go ahead and tell some of you that blame your parents for everything, that your parents did the best they could because they were raised by somebody, and that, that's how they probably raised you. And you got to realize today that you're not perfect, they're not perfect, and their parents' parents aren't perfect. Your great-great-grandfather or grandmother's not perfect along the way. That's a whole different generation. I'll tell you what, I want you to understand today, we need to take personal accountability of who we are as a Christian in Jesus Christ. We are to love God and keep His commandments. If anybody's with me this morning, say amen. I tell you what, I hope you eat better than you are amen in today because we got a lot of food next door and you need to eat it up or take it home with you, amen? But I can tell you you need to take this message home with you because God, he wants to, he wants to, to, to shed love in your heart this morning. He wants you to experience the love of God. Some of you grew up, maybe you did. You grew up without a father, maybe you grew up without a mother, maybe you grew up in a hardship of things, maybe you grew up in an orphanage, maybe you grew up in a foster home. I can tell you today that you're in a prime spot to understand that the father that he gave his only begotten son, he wants to shed his love in your heart this morning where you would know what it's like to have a father. Amen, Brother Keith, amen. 
I want you to know today that that love is the greatest love of all. I want you to know that he wants you to experience his love like never before. It says over in the Psalms, and I can't remember where, what, the, what the verse is, but I remember what it says. When mother and father forsake you, God says, I will take you up. I'm going to tell you something. If you'll let Jesus come in, if you'll let Jesus come in, you'll experience a love you have never experienced before. And I want you to know that he is willing and able and ready to come into your life. I ain't even got down to the verse yet, amen? It says in verse 15 of John chapter 14, If you love me, keep my commands. Now look down with me in verse 21. He that has my commandments and keeps them, he it is that loves me, and he that loves me shall be loved of my Father. Y'all see that this morning? Say amen. amen. If you love Jesus, you'll know how to love the Father. If you love the Father, you'll know how to love Jesus. And he said, and I will manifest, I will show myself, uh, uh, myself unto him. I want you to know that Jesus wants you to know who he is because he knows who you are. And I can tell you this morning, look down with me in verse 22. And Judas said it to him, not Judas Iscariot. He's out, he's out betraying him right here at this point. And Lord, how is it that thou will manifest thyself unto us and not into the world? Now look at, look at this profound statement that Jesus made because he's given us an invita invitation right here. Hey, look at verse 23. And Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words, and my Father will love him and we will come unto him. Who? The person that loves him. Amen? Hey, listen, guy, if you'll open up your heart this morning and let Jesus in, let me tell you, you you're going to have God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit all come in at the same time. It's going to be a love that you've never experienced before. And this is nothing charismatic. There is one baptism. There's one faith. And there's a baptism of the Holy Spirit and there's many feelings along the way. But I can tell you today, if you've never been born again, I can tell you today that you, you, you're in a prime location today. If you'll open up your heart, you'll have a sense of love that you never sensed before. You'll have a father like you've never had before. You'll have a savior like you never had before. He says, he says this, if a man love me, and he will keep my words and my father will love him. And we will come unto him and make our abode with him. Notice that word abode. Everybody say abode. It means a permanent dwelling place. It means abiding, a permanent dwelling place. If you're with me this morning, say amen. And I can tell you, where does that happen? Well, it happens in our hearts this morning in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 22 and 23. That's, that's where the Holy Spirit abides, amen? Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You know, I can tell you, you can be a, you can be a Christian and fall out of love with Jesus. Did you know that? It said in, 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 uh, in Revelation chapter 2 in verses 4 and, four and 5, uh, the church at Ephesus, they fell out of love with Jesus. And Jesus told them, hey, y'all do all these good works. You, you look good. You smell good. You, you look like you got it all together. You're growing and all this thing. But there's, there's, there's a big old problem here. There's a great big problem. You don't love me. And he said, what you need to do, you need to quit all that junk you're doing. Go back to where you started at and love me and repent of your sin. That's what it says in Revelation chapter 2, verses 4 and 5. If you're with me this morning, say amen. amen. But you can fall out of love with the Lord this morning. And in and and John 15, 10, write this down. Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. That, where's that word abide? It's the same, th same word as abode. It's a dwelling place, place. Even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Matthew 5, 44. Jesus says, But I say to you, love. Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Hmm. Do good to them that hate you. Hmm. 
and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Hmm. It's easier to go by the verse before that. You've heard it in old that, that uh, to, to, to uh, hate your enemies. But Jesus says you need to love your enemies. Amen? amen. If y'all are with me this morning, say amen. amen. 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 says this, Beloved, see he's talking to the, he's talking to the brethren. Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God. If you wonder why you don't have any love in your heart, because it comes from God, and guess who may be missing out of your life? Beloved, let us love one another, for, for love is of God, and everyone that love, loveth is born of God and knows God. Uh-oh. Hmm. Ephesians 3, 17 that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love. Hmm. Hebrews 13, 1, let brotherly love continue. Hmm. Galatians 5, 13, by love serve one another. 1 Corinthians 13, 13, and now abideth. There's that word abideth. It's a dwelling place. It's a permanent place. Amen? Amen. Now abideth faith, hope, charity, and love. Charity is love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Church, you can't love without the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, in Romans 5, 5, the Holy Spirit sheds love in our hearts. And without the Holy Spirit, there is no love. Turn with me to Romans chapter 8 this morning. And it says up in verse 28, are y'all getting anything out of this? We need to quit performing and start being. Amen? But it's going to take God to come in. God has got to change your heart. It's hard for us to change our heart when we don't have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Right. Romans 8, 28. For we know that the things, all things work together for good to them that love God. Everybody say love God. Right. And to them that are called according to his purpose. Y'all with me this morning? Say amen. I love verse 31. What shall we say, say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Look down with me in verse, verse 30, uh, 34. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died and rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? I'll tell you who will separate you. Satan will. Amen? He don't want you to know that love. Matter of fact, if he can distract your mind about right now, if he can distract you about right now, if he can keep you from listening to the rest of this sermon today and open up your heart and letting Jesus come in, I can tell you what he can do. He can keep you from the love of God. But you're in control of that. I'm just a messenger boy. Amen? You can't blame the messenger boy. You can't blame God. You can't blame Jesus. He done paid the full price. All you can blame is yourself this morning. Amen? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, shall distress, shall persecution, shall famine, nakedness, pearl, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Let me tell you something. Being born again isn't an easy walk, but it's the right walk. He says in verse 37, Nay, and all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. He loved us. We love him because he first loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, nor, nor a, or an electric bill you can't get paid, or, or a, a, a disease you can't get rid of, anything that nothing can separate you from the love of Christ. 
nor height, nor depth, nor any creature shall, shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why? Because God so loved. He so loved. He allowed, he gave his only begotten son to die on the cruel cross of Calvary where he could take on every sin debt, every past, present, future, everything wiped out clean as a slate and he did it upon the cruel cross of Calvary. He's the God of all gods, the creator of the universe and he came and died on that cross for every one of you that will accept him today. And his blood is enough. His sacrifice is enough. Not only to save you, but he'll hold it all together for you. Some of you, is all, you're all to pieces this morning, but I can tell you, God's got you. Amen? Y'all know where I'm at this morning? Because I don't. <laughs> Let me give you the third thing. Let's finish up. When you go back to John chapter 14, there is one hinge that hinges the love of God to the people of God. And it's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit sheds love in our hearts, church. Amen. Look down with me in verse 15. If you love me, keep my commands. Here it is. And I will pray the Father, he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide, there's that word abide again, with you forever. Church, that word another comes from a Greek word, aos. It means another of the same kind. Another of the same kind as Jesus. Who's the other of the same kind as Jesus? That's the Holy Spirit of God. That's the comforter. That's the para, parakletos. The one who works alongside of. And it says in verse 17, he said, the spirit of truth who the world cannot receive. See, when you're lost, you don't understand the Holy Spirit. You're, you're sitting there thinking, I don't know if I got the Holy Spirit or not. You, you'll know when you, you'll know. And he said, the world can't receive because it seeth him not. See, they're, they're spiritually blind. They can't see that they need. They, they know they need Jesus, but they've turned him off somewhere. Amen? Neither knoweth him, but you know him, the saved. For he dwells with you. He's the body and Holy Spirit and shall be in you. He's, going to be, he's the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit works in and around us and through us. And when you're saved, he comes in us. Amen? What did Jesus say in verse 8 to 19? He, or verse 18, I will, not, I, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Look, look down with me in verse 26. But the comforter, the Holy Spirit, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the, work, the Father will send in my name. This is Jesus talking. He shall teach you all things, bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. You just need the Holy Spirit. Let me ask you something this morning. Do you love him? Do you, do you really love him? I told them Sunday night or Wednesday night, I think it was, that I went through, and it might have been last week, my days run together. But I told them I, in 2000, between 2000 and 2006, I went through about a six-year period, and I was preaching, teaching. I, I went through a period of doubting that I was saved. Y'all ever do that? Three of you? What do the rest of you do? I was doubting it. But you know what? That it was it was here. It wasn't here. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I wasn't afraid to die. I wasn't afraid to stand for him. I wouldn't, hey, I'd preach, I'd preach and preach hard. But you know, through all that, Lord allowed me to go through that where, where I'd get all the performance out of me. Hello? And he milked me down out of my performance. You know, over the years, we, we, we build up things that we think we ought to look like to be a Christian. You can take that in a dollar ten cents and get you a good sun drop down there at the old West Mark. That's all that's worth. Performance is not what God, want. it's not what God wants. God wants you. He wants all of you. 
He wants your whole heart. He don't want you to shine and look good on the outside and be a heretic on the inside. He wants you to shine and be loving on the inside where you can shine on the outside. See, it's the work of the heart. And only God can do that. Anybody home? Am I the only one here? But I'm so glad he let he, I went through, that was the hardest time. I, I was depressed. I'd get depressed. I'd get up two or three o'clock in the morning, but I'd get into the Word of God. And through that word, that's where I found, that's where I found my comfort. Why? Because the comforter was in me. Amen? Amen. The Holy Spirit. For you Pentecostals, it's the Holy Ghost. For us Baptocostals, it's the Holy Spirit. But it's still the same person. It's the one of the same kind as Jesus. Because when Jesus went up, he sent back the Holy Spirit. Amen? And that's what you that's what you need today. You need the love of God that comes from the Holy Spirit. Amen? You love, let me ask you something this morning. Now, don't, 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 don't tell me, tell Jesus. Do you really love him? Do you love him? I want to tell you, God knows who loves him. Because that's where his servants are going to be. His servants is always right there. Amen? God's dealing with your heart about, listen, God's tired of all the, listen, Acting, that goes out. At, do your acting. Go, go to Hollywood. Go to Hollywood and get you an Emmy. Go out there to act. But come to Jesus to be real. Amen? Amen. It seems like in the day and age of our church age that we've become mechanical instead of lovable. We've become mechanical. Instead of praiseable, we become mechanical instead of being ethical. What you need is Jesus today. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we, we love you and we pray.